came out 31, I want to take a moment, or not a moment, but I want to look at example six, and we're going to compose functions analytically, but now I want to circle back to that domain idea that I, I had mentioned when we first introduced composition of functions, and I said I'd come back to it a later example. Well, it's a later example. So I'm just going to remind you that the domain of your composite function is all the numbers in the domain of g, the innermost function, that allow g of x to be the domain in the domain of f. So we're going to start with the domain of our innermost function and see what applies to our outermost function. So with that being said, let's give it a try. This is telling us that f of x is a radical and g of x is just a regular old line, right? 2x plus 5, slopes 2, y-intercepts 5. Now I do want to remind you, again, there are three domain issues that you run into in math. So I'm just going to put these off to the side here so that we keep reiterating these as often as needed. So the big three, right? We've got fractions, you've got radicals, and you've got logarithms. Now these first two we've talked about a bit in here and you should have seen at some point in your math career. So you can't have a fraction where your denominator is zero. All right, so denominator can't equal zero, right? This is a problem. For the radicals, actually I shouldn't say this is equal. For the radicals, I cannot take the square root of a negative number, or really you can't have an even index with a negative radicand. And when I say even index, that's the number that's here by the root symbol. If nothing's written, it's implied that it's two. When I say radicand, it's the stuff under the radical. Now for a logarithm, you have to take the logarithm of a positive number. So your argument can't be negative or zero. All right, so this one, three, we'll get into in chapter six. So we can put a pin in that for now, but we're gonna, we've already run into these two and we're about to run into two specifically, right? If you take a look here, I do have an even index, right? There's no number, there's no number written here. So it's implied that it's two. That is an even number or an even index. And then I have to make sure my radicand isn't negative. And there are values of X that I could plug in that would make the stuff under the radical, which is the radicand, it would make that negative. Try plugging in zero. Zero minus one is negative one, and I can't take the square root of negative one, at least not over the real number. So I would have a problem. All right, so let's try and do this. I'm gonna find the formula for f of g of x, and then we're gonna talk about its domain. So when you see function composition, we're gonna say, well, I know it's not multiplication. This is f of g of x. Now I'm starting with an x, so I'll end with an x. So I start with my innermost function, okay? And that's gonna be 2x plus five. So this is going to become f of 2x plus five. And the f rule says whatever's in the parentheses, substitute it right here. Subtract one from it and then take its square root. So this will become the square root of, all right, 2x plus five and then minus one. Right, so instead of x minus 1, I'm going to do 2x plus 5 minus 1. These happen to be like terms, so this will ultimately be the square root of 2x minus 4. All right, so I found f of g of x. I found the first part of this. Oops. I did not put my parentheses around this. So f of g of x. But what I have not addressed yet is the domain. Okay, so when it comes to your domain, start with your innermost function and work yourself out. So g of x was my original function, so let's take a look at it. 
or I shouldn't say my original, but my innermost. Okay, so if I'm just focusing on g of x, did I have a fraction? No. Did I have a radical? No. Did I have a logarithm? No. So what was the domain of g of x? The domain here was all real numbers. So my initial domain was all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. I had no problems because I didn't have a fraction, I didn't have a radical, I didn't have a log. You can plug any number into 2x plus 5 and you'll get a y value back out. So my, I had no restrictions. Okay, great. Now let's take a look at how that applies once we f that function. Right Now when I take f of g of x, I have the square root of 2x minus 4. Well, take a look at f of g of x. Did I have a fraction? No. Did I have a radical? Yes. And I need to make sure that this quantity right here, the radicand, 2x minus 4, that has to be greater than or equal to 0. It cannot be negative. All right, I have an even index, this cannot be negative. So let me do the work here. I'll put another little separator. All right, so I'm, right, so I'm going to make sure that 2x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. I need a positive radicand, or we're allowed to take the square root of 0. So I'm going to solve this linear inequality. I'm going to get 2x has to be greater than or equal to 4. x has to be greater than or equal to 2. And if you think about that on the number line, right, we're at 2. I want to go greater than or equal to. I want to talk about my domain from low to high. So that's going to be 2 to infinity. So when I talk about the domain of this function, my low is 2, my high is infinity. And now let's talk about parentheses and brackets. Infinities always get parentheses. Okay. And this 2, I want to include it. I have a greater than or equal to symbol. So I'm going to put the bracket here. And I just want to have a little chat about domains and ranges versus intervals of increasing and decreasing. So in the last section, we looked at intervals of increasing and decreasing, and I said always use parentheses. And that's still true. It's just that once you see your first domain after that lesson, sometimes students will think, well, why am I using a bracket? I thought I should always use parentheses. It's just for intervals of increasing and decreasing that you always use parentheses. Domains and ranges, it's very possible to have brackets, parentheses, some of each, um, both, neither, all of that is possible. So I could have a bracket and a bracket, a bracket and a parentheses, a parentheses and a bracket, parentheses and parentheses, but for domains and ranges, both of these symbols are possible. For increasing and decreasing intervals, we're always going to use parentheses. Okay? All right, so let's compose these functions in the other direction. Let's do g of f, and that's going to be our second problem here. So I'm going to move this up so that I have plenty of space. So let's take a look at g of f of x, and then we're going to talk about its domain as well. So let's do g of f of x. All right, so f of x was the square root, oops, excuse me, this needs to still say g. All right, I'm going to start with my innermost function, and f of x was the square root of x minus 1. And then from there, I need to plug the square root of x minus 1 into g. And g was 2x plus 5. So this is going to become 2 times the square root of x minus 1 plus 5. And that's, that's going to be my function. So let's make sure we're writing this. g of f of x is equal to 2 square root x minus 1 plus 5. OK, there's half of my question answered. But it also asked me to find the domain. OK, start with your innermost function. I think you'll see we have a radical, right? I have a domain issue right out the gate. I can't have an even indexed radical with a negative radicand. So here, I need to make sure my radicand, which is now x minus 1, that has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x has to be greater than or equal to 1. So my initial domain is 1 to infinity. Okay, Now, let's take that and look at the domain of g. All right. Now I'm going to scooch back up just so I can remind us where, which functions we're pointing to, but 
this function, I've got to have x be greater than or equal to 1. Now I've got to look at the domain of g. Let's see what 1 or higher looks like when we apply that to the g function. Okay, so if I head back to g, keep in mind I'm only allowed to plug in a number that's 1 or higher here, and I apply that to the g function, well, g doesn't have any restrictions. All right, I don't pick up any extra restrictions when plugging into g, so I just have to stay true to my original restriction. So the domain here is going to be from 1 to infinity because that's the only thing I have to worry about. That will keep my radicand positive. Okay, so it's a matter of taking a look at your innermost function, seeing what its domain restrictions might be, and then extending that to your outermost function to see if there's any additional domain issues. All right, so we're going to practice that again with two different types of functions just so we can uh, start to get that under our belts. I'll see you in a few. Bye.